To get started on your Simon Says uh, Virtual Circuit project, uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is go to Tinkercad.com and uh, you'll need to create a new circuit. Uh, as always, I highly recommend clicking right back on Tinkercad here in the upper left corner and changing the name that they give you to something that makes sense. So here it says Epic Cup. You're going to have something different. I'm going to click on Options and Properties and change this to Simon uh, Says without a space. The reason I don't put a space is so that if I uh, port it to actual hardware, not if, but when I port it to actual hardware, I don't have a I don't have a problem opening up the Arduino program. Once you've changed the name, go ahead and click Tinker This. And let's go ahead and grab an Arduino. We're going to need that to get started. So I'm going to grab this Arduino right here. I'll put it right over here. And then I'm going to click on code. We can actually start coding right away. Um, I'm going to switch to text as always. Once you switch to text, uh, you can't switch back and forth. You're going to lose the code that you have here. I'm going to delete the, uh, the program that is the default program here, the blink program. So I'm going to delete these four lines of code. And I'm going to delete this line of code here in the setup. Um, you still need to keep the setup and you need to keep the loop. If you don't have these, your program just won't run. Okay, now that we have an Arduino Uno and we have a blank program, the first thing we need to do is uh, create a series of random colors. Uh, to make our program easy to maintain, let's create a new function to compartmentalize the code we're about to write. So I'm going to create a function called uh, add to sequence and I'm gonna give it a starting curly brace and an ending curly brace right away and then inside this function I'm gonna create a variable called random color and the type of variable that it's going to be is a byte. So I'll say byte random color. The Arduino uh, programming language, it doesn't have a random color generator, but it does have a random number generator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this color equal to uh, a random number. And uh, I've got to put something in parentheses at the end here. And so I'm going to put two. And the reason I'm putting two is because it, I only want to focus on two colors to begin with. I don't want to focus on all four. And the reason for that is it'll keep things a little bit simpler as we uh, learn these programming concepts. It'll make it a little bit less work. Um, but it'll also allow you to come back through and uh, work through these videos and tutorials on your own and implement the same code for the remaining two colors. So we're going to start out with just doing red and green, but then I want you to come back and add the code that would be necessary to make uh, blue and yellow work. So to get started, I'm just going to make this uh, random color for red and green, two colors. To see what numbers are being generated by our new function, we need to do three things. The first is we need to start serial communication by writing serial begin 9600. And then we're going to need to print information to our serial monitor by saying serial.print. And then what are we going to print? We're going to print this 
variable we created right up here, the random color. So I'm going to write random color. And then in order to actually execute this function, we need to put it either in the setup or the loop. Um, since I want it to run multiple times, I'm going to put it in the loop. Recall that uh, when you create an Arduino program, all Arduino programs need a setup that runs once and then a loop that runs over and over again. So right inside here, I'm going to put add to sequence and now I'm going to try running the program. First I'm going to open my serial monitor and then I'm going to start the simulation. And if everything's working just right, you should see a ton of numbers show up at the bottom of your serial number or serial monitor. Now you'll notice you see um, zeros and ones. You might have thought that we would have seen ones and twos, but that's not how the random function works. It generates numbers ranging from zero up to, but not including the number we feed into it right here. But that's okay. We can make uh, we can encode the zeros and ones so that let's say zeros are red and ones are green. To slow things down a bit, let's go ahead and add a 500 microsecond delay after our call to add to sequence. So right here within the loop, I'm going to say delay 500. And I'm going to go ahead and clear the serial monitor and I'm going to start that simulation again. Now you can see the numbers being generated. If I stop the simulation and then start it again, you'll see that it picks up right where it left off. Uh, to keep that from happening, I can actually force the, the series here, the sequence, to be uh, to start on a new line by putting um, serial print ln right there, right at the bottom of the setup. And then when I start the simulation, I should see, I'm going to clear it here again, I should see that it shows up on a line, and then if I stop it, and start it again, I should see that uh, sequence show up right below it. Now, you may have noticed something kind of odd here. It looks like it's always the same sequence of numbers each time. That seems like it would be a problem. Uh, over time, a, a person who owned this game that we're making, they would get to the point where they can memorize the sequence. And that would be a major advantage compared to uh, other people they were competing against when they're playing the game. It would be a great way to trick your friends into thinking you have a great memory, but it's not the greatest Simon game. So the sequence is the same each time because the random number generator inside the Arduino depends on a seed. If the seed is the same each time we call the random number generator, then the sequence it chooses will be the same. To get it to generate a, a different sequence, we need to use the random seed command. To use it, we need to give it a number that is different each time we run our program. Where are we going to get a random seed? Well, one way to do it is to give it what is called a floating pin. And Arduino's pins are very sensitive and will pick up stray signals from any nearby sources, such as a human's fingers, or even the air. Let's feed pin zero into the random seed function and see what happens. To do that, the first thing I want to do is create a new variable, uh, a global variable, and I'm going to call it, uh, let's see, byte, and then floating pin. And this will be a pin that we know we're not using for anything else in the Arduino. I'm going to set that equal to zero. Then within add to sequence, I'm going to type random seed and I'm going to say analog read and I'm going to read 
from the floating pin. So this is a piece of hardware. Um, that's actually this pin right here on our Arduino. It's not being used for anything, so it's it's floating up and down and all around. The voltage on this pin uh, is all over the place because, uh, like I said earlier, it's affected by uh, changes in the air, by proximity of your hand, everything. It's like a little antenna. And we're reading the analog value of that, which can range anywhere from 0 to 1,023. Uh, so we're feeding some random number into random seed. Let's see what happens now when I run the simulation. Here you can see we get a sequence that is different from the, the previous sequence. And I'm going to run it again just to make sure that we are getting a truly random sequence. And now you can see, again, we have a different sequence. Next, we need to store this sequence of numbers so that we can uh, later test whether whoever is playing our game is recalling them correctly. To do so, let's create a string variable called sequence above the setup. So I'm going to put it below this uh, floating pin thing. I like to keep all of the variables that pertain to the hardware at the very top and then the variables that uh, are used throughout the program, I'd like to put those right below. So right here, I'm creating a string, which is a series of characters. I'm going to call it sequence. And right now, I'm going to just make it a blank string. There's nothing inside of it. So a string, when you define a string, you have an opening quotation and a closing quotation. If I wanted the string to be Bob, I would just put Bob inside quotes, or I could put one, two, three. Now this wouldn't be the number one, two, three. It would be the characters one, two, three. They have no, no numerical meaning. It's just a string of characters. Um, but like I said, we're just going to make this an empty string for right now. And then within the uh, add to sequence function, I am going to uh, write sequence Let's see, right below random color here, I'm going to write sequence and then plus equals random color. What this will do is it will um, add these uh, random colors that are generated here to the sequence. Uh, so it takes whatever the sequence is and then just appends this random color. This Either it's a zero or one, it appends that to the end of the sequence. Let's take a look at the sequence variable by changing the line at the end of our add to sequence function from random color to sequence. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear our serial monitor here. and run our simulation, run our program. And whoops, I made a mistake. I want to add an LN right here so that I can see these sequences showing up on new lines. So I'm going to clear my serial monitor again, hit start simulation, and now I can see the sequence slowly building. This is the sequence variable getting longer and longer and longer. Let's stop the simulation. Now that we know we have a way to store this entire sequence, the next step is to encode it with uh, uh, letters instead of numbers because it's kind of hard to remember. Is I forget was the was the zero supposed to be red or green? So the easiest way to do that is to put an if statement here. And I'm going to say, let's see, right here, I'm going to say if random color equals zero, 
then I want to append an R to the sequence. And then my next condition is going to be else if the random color equals one. If it's a one, then I want to put, I want to append to the sequence a G instead. So I'm going to clear my serial monitor and start the simulation. And you can see here I have a sequence that gets longer and longer. And if I stop it and start it again, let's see if I get a different sequ uh, sequence. And you can see it does start out different and has a different order. So now we have a way to generate a random sequence of colors, characters that represent colors. And we have a way to store that information so that we can refer back to it later. At this point, you should make a commit to Bitbucket, go to Bitbucket, create a repository for this project, call it Simon Says. And then after that, I want you to implement this functionality for the blue and yellow colors. Add the code necessary to make it so that we see a random sequence with four letters, R, G, B, Y. Once you're done with that, make another commit to Bitbucket. Um, and for the message, it should say something to the effect of uh, completed the add to sequence function for all four colors.